I think. The Ramban uh, makes a new idea about the danger of the danger of hatred. Hatred. And the Haftalareacha Kamocha and how one performs that. Wanna do that? Okay, sounds reasonable. Sounds reasonable. Machlokus Rashi and the Ramban be Yan Chukim. Whether they have reasons or not, I suppose. Uh, uh, okay, let's do that. I have to learn how to and and um, and Sina. It's an interesting. What's this now? The Chukim of the Rasha. Yeah, Chukim. Uh, our our. Ooh, I have braces and smokes. Uh-huh. Um, okay. It's, we're going to be looking at the Pasuk uh, okay. Yud Zion. Okay. I'm sorry, Yud Zion. Well, yeah, Perik, Perik Yud Tet, but uh, around 17, 1917. Let me get my. Do you have a Bible? A Bible. Seventeen. Uh, chapter nineteen, verse seventeen, I think. Chapter nineteen, new text. I believe. Very famous Pasuk, right? Uh, we shall not hate and, each other. And uh, yeah, 17, verse 17. So if you read that verse of, uh, of, of the Torah, you shall not hate your brother. You shall not hate your brother, even your brother. <laughs> you shall surely reprove your fellow and do not fear. And bear, bear a sin because of him. Because of him, yeah. And uh, you shall not take revenge, and you shall not bear a grudge. Grudge. A grudge yes. against the member of your people. Yes. You shall love your fellow as yourself. I am Hashem. Okay. Those two psukim. Okay. Yeah. You notice, uh, by the way, there's a brother, there is... Amitecha, who is your fellow? Right? So how does he call fellow, uh, Amitecha? In the first pasuk, Yud Zayin, look to the brother, and then and you, you shall surely reprove who? Um, your fellow. Fellow. Okay. Fellow. So you got Ach, you got Amit, then uh-huh. then Loti Kam Loti Ter Bnei Amecha, the the sons of your people. What is uh, Amit? Amit is from a, a fellow, a close, a yes, close a person coming in, who is im you, im imcha. Im am, amit, the word im is with, with. So amitecha is a person who is with you, a person who is close to you, you're, you're a fellow. Call like, it in English, I suppose. You are right? me and you right? are pinky. For he's a jolly good fellow, yeah. Or it's right, like we are, fellows. Mm-hmm. And then he says, do not... Bear, do not do take vengeance on Bnei Amecha, who are the people of your people, the, the sons of your nation. Mm-hmm. Then Hafta Lareacha, and you shall love your fellow, fellow, your friend. friend. Reya is your friend, friend. Yeah. again, companion. Kamocha, like you. Your Chaver, like yeah, okay. You should love him like yourself. You've got four different descriptions of people here. <laughs> You, uh, is the Torah trying to tell you a different commandment for different people, Pinky? Uh, no. I, I, but rather? I think it's uh, you should treat everybody equally, I think, maybe. Treat, so, so when it says, Loti Snaita Chicha Bilvavecha, it means really your biologic brother, and thereby saying that you shall 
you should use the other acts like like you would your biologic brother. You think that that's what's meant by that description? You see a Jew, right? This, this Torah, the Torah commandment here describes your attitude towards any Jew. I think the Bible is any Jew, right? So the Torah calls this fellow Jew that you're not supposed to hate, that you're supposed to reprove, you know, that you're not supposed to carry a grudge, that you're not supposed to have vengeance, and that you're supposed to love. Those, those five commandments are here. Any Jew. And the Torah describes that any Jew in four different ways. He's your brother. He is with you. He's your fellow. He's the son of your nation. He is your friend. You know? So, I think it's, it's very interesting, right? I mean, the Torah wants to describe a fellow Jew in these different ways. Is there, would you, would you have a different attitude towards a brother than you would, let's say, to the son of your nation? You may be closer, closer to you. Closer to your brother, right? So if the Torah says, in the same series of commandments, applies it also to the son of your nation, maybe it's trying to tell you, you know what? The son of your nation, your nation should be like your brother, mm -hmm. right? The, the, the one who is just with you, your fellow, should be just like your friend. You notice there's an interchange of these, because it's not, you can, unless you think that these commandments apply to four different kinds of people, that would be a little difficult, right? You shouldn't hate your brother, but you could hate someone else. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't bear grudge against your, the son of your nation, but you could uh, against your brother. I mean, you wouldn't believe that, right? I mean, that's, that's pretty much unlikely that these commandments are for different people. They're the same person. The same person, yes. So, but the Torah goes and out of its way, levels, the Torah goes out of its way to call the same person by a different description. Right. You know what, Eliyahu, you are not just my friend, you are actually my brother, right? Piki is not just a son of the Jewish people, he's actually our friend, yeah. right? I mean, to mix them up makes us want to relate to those people in the same way. Like you said, liko, liko. I think um, you can infer, you, you, you infer, you get, you get a certain command with regard to your brother, which is um, obvi not. obvious. That you shouldn't you hate him. But so then, it's but, pretty obvious not to hate your brother, right? Right. right. And then you will and should infer from that with regard to everyone, all everyone the other else. Sort of kalvachomer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see. Sort of a fortoriori. Yeah? If you're not going to hate your brother, you certainly wouldn't hate anybody else. If the Torah tells you not to hate your brother, yeah. Something like that. Uh, well, well, that actually goes the opposite. Yeah. You know? Right. If I told you not to hate even a stranger, then you certainly wouldn't hate your brother. So it's just sort of the opposite. It's interesting. It's interesting. I never thought about it. Anyway, so there are, there are several commandments here, right? Not to hate, to reprove, so that you will not be guilty of a sin. What sin will you be guilty of? Do you see that Pasuk, the, uh, Pasuk 17? Do not hate your brother in your heart. your heart. You shall surely reprove your fellow and do not bear a sin because of, of him. How do, you bear, sin? how do you bear a sin in God because of him? What sin are we talking about? Hmm. I have no idea. You know what reprove means? Yeah. Oh. No, reprove, reprove means is if you see somebody committing a crime. This is not correct. You have to, to correct him, correct, to, to, right. correct him, to criticize him, to to try to change his behavior, right? right. So you so do surely. Ocheach tochiach, by the way, is a uh, repetition. Ocheach tochiach, that one word would be enough. But ocheach tochiach means surely you shall, or maybe more than once, you should try to correct him. Right. 
and you shall not, so that you not bear a sin because of him. What do you mean? How do you bear a sin because of him? Maybe uh, his sin would transfer to you. You hear what he's saying? Yeah. Somebody committing a crime, right. somebody doing something wrong, you can criticize him, you can correct him, you can say something, and you don't. Because you don't want to get involved, or because he's a big shot and he's going to be angry at me, I'm going to get in trouble too, you know? And he's going to start criticizing me. Who wants to get into trouble? Why should I get involved? Right? Like, uh, so you don't say anything. Like the two, the two, uh, the two children of, of Aaron, Nadab and Abihu. Nadab was the one, that, the, the, the leader to, uh, to sin. And Abihu, he was... Yeah? Oh. I didn't, didn't say anything. I didn't know anything about this. Yeah. I didn't know anything about That's this. That's what the commentator said about it. I never heard about that. He bore his sin, the sin of, the, of his brother. If you say so. But there are many examples like this, right? People who don't get involved and don't criticize, they will bear a sin on account of him because if you don't criticize, if you don't stop a crime, you are guilty of the same crime. In the, eyes of heaven. in the eyes of heaven. A court, a court can take you. you. A court cannot uh, take you to, to jail for it, but uh, in the eyes of heaven, Hashem knows that you right. could have done something about it and you didn't, right? So, we understand a little bit about Loti Salah, okay? Then he says, Loti Kompa Loti Tor. You must not take vengeance. I think Pinky could tell you very quickly what the difference between Tikom and Titor. There are two different kinds of ways of responding to a person who did something wrong to me. You did something wrong to me, I'm going to hit you, I'm going to take vengeance against you. The other way is, you did something wrong to me, and then you come and you ask me for a favor. You forgot that I feel bad, right? Mm -hmm. And you come to me and you ask me for a favor, so I want to be a pretty good guy, and I want to give you a little bit of a jab. So I say, of course I will lend you this book. Of course you could have my lawnmower to use on you, but, and I want you to know that I'm a better person than you are because before you were not nice to me, you know, and I could take it out on you, but I am a very ethical person. I'm ready to lend it to you, not like you did to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's Titor. Mm -hmm. And that also gives him a jab, right? I mean, you understand. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that could be worse than actually hitting him, right? He, he wishes that you hit him instead of making him feel like he's uh, two cents, right? Mm -hmm. So, loti kompa loti tor, et amecha, the sons of your people, ve'ahavta l'reacha kamocha, and you shall love your fellow like yourself. Ani Hashem. I am God. So, you, you notice that that's the, ma that's the maximum, right? Don't hate, right? Reprove him. Don't take vengeance and don't even sarcastically take vengeance. And I want you to love him. And then he says, because I am, I am God. What is this I am God business? Why, why is I am God mentioned at the end of the Pasuk? Do you have any conceivable reason why you shall live on? Because he's, he's, I am God. He's the one that, that, that he, he is allowed to, to take vengeance of. Who? God. God. Hashem. Oh. Leave him to me. Whoa, that's... Uh, you hear that? Okay. But you shall love him and let me take care of any justice that has to be done. That's a very interesting... I never thought of that. You understand? Ani Hashem. Ani Hashem le kabel. Ani notain... You know, leave, leave that to me. perspective, though. I, I think it's more like a... gentle... that... Ani um, Hashem, meaning... Um, because I'm, I'm gentle, I'm, I'm loving. You should be, you should be loving. You hear what he says? Right? I, I, God, am the one who loves humanity. I love all people. And therefore, I want you to be like me. I want you to love him. Or, that's two. So we've got, leave him to me. You've got, I am love, therefore you should love. Because, yeah. And maybe the third one is, listen, you're looking at this person... He is created in my image. I mean, he's my, he's my creation. So you should love him just because of that. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm, me, I, God, am inside of him to a degree, right? So, so you can't hate another thing, right? So 
we've got three possibilities of what the Ani Hashem is, right? The other possibility is, fourth is, remember we're talking about emotions here. We're not necessarily talking about actions, especially in the Ahavta Lareach HaKamocha. We'll see what kind of commandment that is. Is this an emotional thing? Well, maybe Ani Hashem, in many places in the Torah, when the Torah commands you to do something, and then it says Ani Hashem, the many Mepharshim say, God wants you to know He knows very well what's going on. Right? It may not be obvious the way you behave, whether you are or other are not loving, right? But God knows if you're loving, right? The person may not know. You can flatter him, and you can make it look like you love him, but you don't really love him. And Hashem, I want you to know, I know the inside of your heart, right? So you've got maybe four different ways of understanding Ani Hashem, right? Okay, so now, it's, a, it's, a, it's an amazing tup Yeah. Gigantic, yes. really gigantic, okay? Yes, it is. So, if you look at the Ramban here, so don't take him, right? So he says, So he is pointing out something that we did not pick up in the Pasuk. It says, Don't hate your fellow or your brother in your heart. What do you mean in your heart? Of course, everybody hates with his, in his heart, no? What does the Torah have to say? Don't hate. No, hate only. It would be to say, don't hate. Yeah. What is this is in his heart? So he says, because it is the general way, unless you're a bully, the general way, if you hate somebody, you hate somebody and you don't show it. Right? So, yeah, he's, I hate that guy. That's all. You just don't have anything to do with him. You reject him. You don't have any right? You hate him in your heart. Right? So he says, because this is the actual way that most people do, to cover up their hatred and not show it in their heart. Like in, uh, what is it, is it in Tehillim or Mishle? In Mishle, right? In Mishle it says, the a hater uh, uh, dissembles. dissembles with his lips. He says something decent. He says, hello, good morning. But he actually hates your guys, right? Yes. You understand? He, he dissembles. He pretends with his lips. But in his heart, right? He is. Nice to see you. Yeah, nice to see you. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. How are you? He's Kira Gatun Bahobet. So the Torah describes the hatred in, his, in one's heart as is common. You know, using the usual, the usual uh, expression in one's heart. Okay? And then, the next, the Ramban is famous for his approach to this pasuk, is making these commandments in a string, connected. We thought, don't hate, then don't reprove somebody who's doing something wrong so you're not guilty of the same thing, right? Don't take vengeance and do up, right? Two, four different commandments, right? But the Ramban is famous for connecting. What's going on? He says that. Somebody does something to make you hate. Right? Mm -hmm. So you hate him in, his heart, in your heart. And you say, good morning to him, you see him come to show. Right? But you really hate him in your heart. Right? But he says, don't do that, the, the Torah says. Hochehaftochechetamitecha mitzvah acheret. A different commandment. Lelamdo tochachot musar. To teach him proper behavior, to criticize him. Lo tisa alav chet, shiye alecha asham kasher. And we had said, right? It would be a sin upon you if you can criticize him and you can correct him if you didn't. Right? That was Unkelos' approach. That you shall not receive from, because of him, uh, responsibility or uh, guilt. That you should not be punished for his sin. And then the commandment comes that you should live it, love it. It's going to give you a, a way the dynamics of these things are. Usually, if you hit, if you hate somebody, right? Since the Torah says, you're over, you're transgressed a commandment. Where a halo and one who loves bring love to him, say he fulfills the commandment. Good. I noticed the list in and part of the um, the chain of uh, six hundred six hundred thirteen. Six hundred thirteen commandments. 
Right. According to the Ramban, there's no question. That's a lab and an asset. Mm -hmm. You wondered about the, whether the Ramban does the same? I don't know. Maybe. Don't know. The question is whether it is a lab shame or maase, right? And so, okay. But now the Ramban is going to tell you something. The Ungulu seems to say there are four different commandments here, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. But he says, in my opinion, it's like this. Ki hochiach tochiach. Kimo v'hochiach Abraham et Avimelech. Just like, you remember, the first time that the Torah mentions hochiach is when Avimelech, is when Abraham met Avimelech. Mm, reprimanded Avimelech for having uh, his uh, wells filled up. Right? And uh, by, then, by the servants of Ali Malik. Well, then, when the man was, when he took Sarah. No, he didn't before. criticize him. Was before. That was before. He already, remember, God was the one who, who reproved Ali Malik and he came and he brought him his wife back. Just so that you know, we're not leaving the big show tonight. All right, thank oh, you. Okay. So, oh, so when people be, come in, you can. You go that way. Right. Okay. okay. So, you got this. So, so no, no. Uh, he, well, when he took his wife, God is the one who intervened, yeah. and he brought him back his wife, and Abimelech is the one who criticized Abraham. How could you do right. this to us by not telling us that she was your wife instead of your sister? That's a different story, right? Yeah. But then, he gives him a lot of wealth, and he does very well, and he digs some, some wells, and then he says, go from us because you've become rich, and the servants of Abimelech started plugging up the wells that Abraham had dug up. Mm -hmm. So when Abimelech, he was... Already sick break. He's in Beersheba. And Avimelech is back in Mitzrayim. And Avimelech gets news that Abraham is successful, famous, people revere him and respect him. So he comes to Abraham and he says, Listen, I've heard, I see that God is with you. I want to make a treaty with you that you will not harm our children and we will not harm your children. We will make peace between us. Right? He's a little worried that Abraham still has some bad feelings about him, right? Mm -hmm. From the time of the previous. So Abraham criticizes Hochiach, the word Hochiach. Abraham criticizes, reprimands Avimelech about the wells that his servants had plugged up, right? Assuming that the king is responsible for his servants, right? Mm -hmm. The king knows what the servants does. Maybe the king even commanded his servants to do this. So he's telling the king, listen, what, uh, what was this? It wasn't right that you, that you plugged up my wells, right? right? That's the first time the, the, the word is mentioned. Vayomer hakatu, al tisnai tachicha velvavecha vaasoto lecha shelorets kirzoncha, right? Aval tochicho, madua kacha asita, imadi velo tisa alavchet lechasot sinatcha belivacha velo tegidlo. Right? This is a completely different way. He says, the Torah says, don't hate somebody who did something wrong to you. Let's say Abraham, right? He feels bad. He thinks the king commanded his servants to plug up the wells. Not nice to do this to me, right? So he feels bad about Abimelech. He might hate him, right? So Abimelech comes to him. And, and so rather than continue to, he could have said, yeah, sure, let's make peace. And he still hates him, you know, for doing this for the well, right? But instead, Abraham says to him, I feel bad that this happened, you did this to me. Right? Instead of hating, he reproves him. Mm -hmm. Then, what does Avimelech say? Avimelech says, I didn't know about it if you didn't tell me. I didn't know that the servants did this. I feel terrible. It's a terrible thing that they did. Loyadati. I mean, if you look at the, the part, he says, I don't know. In other words, Abraham could have solved that problem of bad feelings long before if he only would have asked the king why before, did he do this? Before right? going before to Israel, Israel. Be, No, not before going to Israel, because that, they did it only after he was there. No, no, no. After he was on his way back to, to, to Israel, they, they plugged up the wells. So he could have told him, he could have sent messengers, he could have talked to them. Uh -huh. but, okay. So when bearing a sin, according to the Ramban, is the sin of hatred. The pinky, you know, scratches my car, or I actually did. I once broke the mirror on his car. Right? I broke the mirror on his car. I, I, I drove by or so I did something. I don't even remember. I drove, really? I broke the mirror. Really? Yeah, I really did. I really did. So let's assume that he was the kind of a person who says, eh, I can't stand that guy. Yehuda, you look what he did to my car. And he doesn't say anything. 
just walks around. Every time he sees me, he nods his head, says good morning, but inside he's feeling terrible. Thinking, he's, he might be thinking that I knew what I did and I didn't say anything to him. You know, I was, I, I'm trying to get away with it. I don't want to pay him for this. And he never tells me about it. He continues to hate me, right? So that, according to the Ramban, would be a sin because he could have instead done what the Torah says. Do not hate the person in your heart. In your heart meaning keep it in your heart. Don't keep it in your heart. But rather, reprove him. Tell Yehuda, you know, uh, I have a feeling that uh, you, you damaged my car, my, my mirror. I, I would like you to do something about it. Did you do it purposely? So, so I would have a chance to say, God forbid, I didn't even know that I did, uh, scratched your mirror. Uh, you thought that I did it purposely? Of course I didn't do it purposely. Now that you tell me that I did it, of course I want to pay for it, right? Which is what happened, right? He came to me and he told me that, so I paid for the mirror, right? Because if he didn't do that, and he would continue to hate me in his heart, then he would have a sin of hatred in the heart. That's the way the Ramban, do not hate your fellow, your, your brother, in your heart, meaning keeping it in, hidden, Mm -hmm. But rather reprove him for what you feel bad about, so, so that so that he will have a chance to excuse himself or to apologize or to make amends or to explain whatever, right? So that you will not have a sin of hating. So Avram was not uh, perfect in this case. Was not perfect. Right. Avimelech, so to speak, gave him the opportunity right. of, right. of 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 deciding. You know, I really should reprove him instead right. of hating. It's a good, good point. I mean, yeah. Yeah. So, listen, we learn from the Avot. Right. You don't have to say that they are perfect human beings, right? Anyway. And in fact, Avimelech said, you, you, no one told me, I didn't know until today, until today I didn't realize. Now, if we take him as an honest man, then he really is telling you, uh, you know, maybe I'll make amends, I'll give you something for it, or I'll tell my servants not to do that anymore, or something, right? But he, he didn't know. Okay? Unless you think Avimelech is a liar and he's just diplomatic. You know, Putin says, oh, no. I... <laughs> okay? I don't know. I don't know. Right? But so, so, so to speak, according to the Ramban, the, the sin would be the sin of Abraham if he didn't say this. Well, why uh, um, you say that Avimelech was in the train? But I thought Paro was in the Oh, there, was, there were two long no. times. There were two times when, uh, when uh, Abraham went, right? He went once to Mitzrayim. It was Avimel, no? Paro, Paro was was with Yitzchak, no? I have to remember. First, uh, he met Avimel. He went to Mitzrayim. He came back and he met again Avimel. Who oh, was it? Maybe there were all the kings who were called Avimel. Avimel who pichol sal Yeah, looks like it's the same, huh? isn't it? Well, no, all, all the powers. All the kings was a title. All the powers. All the powers. Power. Power. Yes. Yeah, he went to Grar. Yeah, and, yeah. and he said there to his wife, tell them that you're my sister. And Abimelech sent her to catch her and took her. But Abimelech was the king there. I mean, but, uh, in Grar. Grar. I mean, so it's Erech yeah, Plishtim, I guess. Okay. So, in yeah, the Negev. It wasn't thinking. Egypt, it was... It was Plishtim. It was on the way to Egypt. Oh, okay. Right, right, right. Yeah. Uh, it seems like Yitzchak went to Egypt, no? Oh, no, Yitzchak no, was he... going to go, but he was told not to go. Right. He was, right. Yeah, to okay. stay in Exeter all the time. No, but when this, when this happened, is after he went to Egypt. And uh, Egypt, he went to before, right? One second. Yes. Uh, I guess he yeah. met Abimelech first time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before Mitzrayim, when there was a first famine in the Parakut Beit, he went to Mitzrayim. And there he also said about his wife that she's a sister. And then the king, Paro, took her. Okay? And Paro then finds out that it was not true, and so on and so on, and he goes out rich and so on and so on and Lot with him and then Lot separates from him and goes to Sodom and he goes to and he stays in Eretz Israel. Then there's another family and, and he goes to Gerar and, and there Abimelech grabs and, the wife. Abimelech reprimands him. First grabs the wife. 
Avimela. Okay. Uh, he went to Prishtin two different times. His wife was kidnapped twice. Once by Paro in Mitzrayim first, yeah. and then by Avimelech in Prishtin land right. a second time. He did the same thing twice. Right, but he <laughs> told, but, told people that Jesus is. Avimelech rep reprimanded him for, for lying him. about his wife. Yeah, lying about his wife, yes. Right, so. right. And why did you do this? So Abraham says why he did it. Remember, yeah, he says, I know, people here. I know in this place there is no law and there's no justice, yeah. right? And the people don't have a decency here. I, I, I saw, I don't know what he saw, but I guess that was, that's what he knew or saw. And therefore I thought that they would kill me. Mm -hmm. So that was a little criticism, criticism of the king because he's mm -hmm. running the country without uh, justice and without uh, law. Okay, no, 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 let's keep, let's keep going. But so, so far you will, if you don't tell him, then you will have a sin because you hate him. Let's go on. And then you don't tell him. Key, because there's something good that can come from repro reproving him. If you talk to him and you criticize him and you tell him what he did wrong to you, he will excuse himself. Or he will repent and he will confess on his sin. And you will forgive him. One something, right? Either it's a misunderstanding, and he'll explain himself because he never was guilty of anything. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. I never did it, right? I, your, your mirror is broken, but I was never near your car, right? It must have been somebody else, right? I mean, I, I don't know. He, he would see it's obvious it's me, but it could have been somebody else, right? That's an explanation. Or I could say, I didn't know I broke your car. I'm, I'm very, very sorry. I'd like to do something to make up for it, and then he forgave me. Did you forgive me for doing it? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> so, so something good can come of that, right? So, do not hate in your heart. Reprove, so that you will not sin by hating somebody and not giving them a chance to make good. So far, so good. So, they, according to Ramban, this is a cascade of three mitzvot that are connected, right? That are connected, right? And that's not the, only that's that. the reason that Hashem asked us to go first to our fellow young people. To beg forgiveness before you talk to God. Right. right. Well, the truth is, it, it will also be true that before Yom Kippur, you will be commanded to come to me if I did something wrong to you. And I do not ask you to forgive me because I, I didn't think about it, or I'm not ready, or, or I don't even know what I did. It's a commandment to you to come to me before Yom Kippur and to say, you know, I want to be your friend, but I want you to know that you stepped on my toe the other day, made me feel that way, right? so that I would have a chance to. Yeah, it depends how you say it, of course. If you slam somebody and say you're a jerk, you know, you did something bad to me, that usually puts a person on the defense, and he doesn't, uh, and he doesn't know how to apologize because it, it, it makes him feel bad. You're criticizing him. You have to do it in the right way. Mm -hmm. right? Okay. Then he says like this. Right? There's, a, there's another sin that can come from hating somebody in your heart and not reproving him and continuing to hate him. Because then you would tend to take vengeance. I really hate him. I can't even, I can't even bring myself to reprove him. So I continue to hate him in my heart. Those are the three things that we talked about, and I have a sin hating him. And then, if if I could ever have a chance to hurt him back, I would do it. I have, I have, I have because this hatred cooks in my uh, heart. Yeah, I have a, I have a problem. I, I do it when I was when I was like about seven years old. When you were seven years old, you buried the rich. No, mm -hmm. uh, my father made a, a wagon for us. To, for the children. And he had in the work for me. And uh, one of the guys accidentally, accidentally uh, took me over. I, I said, Tipped you over? Yeah. yeah. So I, I never really forgave him for that. Oh, maybe I did. But, uh, but it took me a long time. To, uh, did you take vengeance? Uh, no. If you had a chance, maybe you could have, you know, you know, if somebody does something wrong to you, you think, you'll think of some way, some mischief that you can do. You take, let the air out of his tires, you know. You, 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 in behind, you know, you take vengeance, right? 
So this is all, again, it's cascade, right? You start by hating him in your heart. You don't criticize him. You get the sin for hating him. And then you go about trying to make, you know, to, to, make, to, to, to take something vengeance. See how the fourth, now the, the, the next step, next pasuk fits together in this same person, same dynamic, right? So he says like this, right? Um, oh, he's saying, even it is possible that the person has already not even hated him anymore. But he will remember his sin. He's going even further. He's going even further. Let's say I do reprove. You reprove me. And I apologize. And you say, and I say, please forgive me. You say, it's okay, it's all right. Okay. No, no problem. Right? Mm -hmm. But no problem doesn't mean that you okay. like me very much. I mean, no problem. You, you want me out of your face. Right? I mean, it's, it's Peseder. Peseder, okay, okay, okay. You're that kind of a person who makes people feel bad. I'm not going to hold it against you, fine. I don't hate you, it's fine, it's fine, right? But, but you will not wipe out this impression that you have of me, right? That I'm that kind of person, right? She says, <laughs> he says, he will remember his sin, his heart, not to hate him, right? And therefore, the Torah tells us that we have to wipe out the sin of your brother from your heart. Wipe it out, erase it. Right? And so that the next step is we'll make it possible so that you can love him. Now you can't love him just because you forgive somebody doesn't mean that you love him. I told you, you know, we can stay our distance. You know what I mean? Fine, fine. I, I got into trouble with you. you. You hurt my feelings. You want to forgive me? You want me to forgive you? Okay, fine. Right? But you sit over there and I sit over here. Let's not get too close, right? Because uh, we can get into trouble. I can feel sensitive about being in here. So he says, no, no, you have to go even further. <laughs> you have to wipe it out, erase it, That's so really that you powerful. can even come to love him. Very difficult top. This is the Ramban. Right? Now, he, now so, so first of all, we got so far in the Ramban, right? Pinky, you see what he did? He connected the three, the two psukim, completely together in one dynamic. It starts from somebody feeling bad about something, and it goes on all those steps. Um, they're going to have it in the big shoe today. Really? I'm not sure why, but yes, that's what they're doing. At 750. And you? Um, probably to celebrate the uh, Mincha of Rosh Chodesh. <laughs> okay? Now we're saying, so, so we have one, one interpretation so far, beautiful interpretation of the Ramban about these two psukim. Right. Then he says, how do we understand the whole mitzvah of the Haftal Rehakamoha? Love your fellow, your fellow as yourself. Mm -hmm. how do you, how do, you, do you actually mean that? Literally? I mean, does, is a person capable of loving another person like he loves himself? Sometimes parents can love a child more than they love themselves. But to love a fellow more than you love yourself, or as much as you love yourself, is hard, right? So the Ramban wonders about that. He says, you know, this is haflaga. It's an exaggeration. It's a um, is it a good a good word? Exaggeration? Yeah, I guess so, right? Kilo yikabel leha dam sheyovet haverokha avato et nafsho. It is not conceivable, right? Mm -hmm. Capable capable of loving somebody like he loves his own his own soul. In the big shoot. He's quoting a halacha of Rabbi Akiva. That is a famous idea. If you have if we are traveling in the desert and we're both dying of thirst and we have one, you have one bottle of water that might be just enough for you to survive because you have, you know, 140 miles more to get to the first place where there is inhabitants, and if you drink a little bit of water, then you might survive on the other side. But if we share it, nothing will happen. On the other hand, if you give me the water, I will survive and you won't. So what does Rabbi Akiva say? 
even though it says your life comes first. You drink from your bottle. If there isn't enough to share, then so be it. Now that's quite amazing, right? It would be and I I don't know. It sounds like if you don't if you don't if you do share, then you're both going to die. You understand? It's a special case. Sharing is very important, yeah. But we're talking about if you do share, then you're gonna die. And he will die too. So you're not helping him by sharing, right? But one of you might survive. So which one survives? The survival is the person who has the water. Right? Okay. So if that's true, then that it cannot be the haftalrecha means literally, right? Because if you love him as much as yourself, give him the water. Right? So he says like this, right? Ela, but rather, so it's an exaggeration. Mitzvata Torah she Yehov Chaveiro bechol inyan kasher Yehov et nafshol bechol hatov. He should love that there be goodness for his friend as much as he wishes goodness for himself. Right? For example, I need a job, so I would love. I'm looking for a job, but I also look for my friend's job. I, if I hear anything, I I have the same desire the same prayer, the same effort for my friend to have good that I ask for myself. What if, right? What if there's one job? If there's one job and, okay. you, and you can get it, so you can get it first. Of course, Hayach yeah. me, right? But it, it is a, an emotion. It says you should, you should desire, have the same feeling that you want to have goodness for him like you would have goodness for yourself. Okay? Mm-hmm. That kind of intensity. V'yitachem. You see, it doesn't say love. The, the word et and le in Hebrew, in English, it's, it's, uh, it seems the same, right? Le recha means to love to your friend. It doesn't mean love your friend. Vehavta et, when you say vehavta et Hashem lokecha, it says love God, right? It doesn't say love to God, wish for God that he should have all the goodness in the world, right? or try to do God a favor. That means loving to him, to bring love to him. But loving someone, right, would be the hafta et. Loving to him is the hafta le. And our pasuk is the hafta le reacha kamoka. You should show love to him, you should bring things to him because of your love to him, you should deliver love to him, right? Le, le, rather than et. And he says that's probably right. The same thing is mentioned when you say you shall love, bring love or show love to the stranger. In order to, and uh, what it means is that you should, in your mind, find loving him like you would want to bring love to yourself. For example, right? You know a guy there, and you want to be the smart guy in this uh, shiur. So you say, I don't mind being very nice to him and loving him that he should have a good job, that he should have good money, and he should have nice clothing. But I don't really love the idea that he should be as smart as me in this in this shiur, right? Because I should be smarter than him, right? So he says, sometimes a person will be ready to love or show love and wish goodness to a person of certain kind, but not in everything, right? But you should. Right? Right? But if he wishes goodness out of love in everything, then it shall be everything that should be good for him. That he could wish that he should even be more successful even than himself. Which is amazing, right? He's saying even superior to him. So then it's not an exaggeration. That's, so what do you mean? What do you, that's right. In this emotional way, it is not an exaggeration. That even the small amount of jealousy should not be in his heart. But he should love the should. multitude of goodness in to his friend. Adam And he should not have any limit in his love for him. So are we late? 
Uh, well, according to my wife.